Good day, everyone. My name is Chris Herrick, and I'm the Senior Vice President for PACE. I would like to welcome all of you to today's webinar, Validating Caller ID, a key initiative to keep customers answering your calls, brought to you by iConnective. Now, as we prepare to start the webinar, we wanted to remind you of a few housekeeping items. All the participant lines are on mute. If you would like to ask a question, please do so in the Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen. We will get to as many of the questions as possible during the last 10 to 15 minutes of our time today. The recording of this webinar will be available on the PACE website in approximately a day or two, and we'll also be able to send the slides out to all of our participants later today. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the speaker for today's webinar, Mr. Bryce McCorder. Bryce is the Director of Product Management Information, Information Solutions at iConnective and oversees product development for several flagship products that are a part of the company's network and operations management solution, as well as an industry-leading routing solution. As the authoritative partner of the communications industry for more than 30 years, iConnective's market-leading solutions enable the interconnection of networks, devices, and applications for more than 2 billion people every day. A U.S.-based company, Telcordia Technologies, does business as iConnective. Now, Brian has over, Bryce excuse me, has over 15 years of experience in enterprise, consumer, and wholesale telecommunications, holding roles in separate provider relations, intercarrier compensation, and interconnection, routing, and fraud prevention. Prior to iConnective, Bryce worked with WiMAX Corp, Broadbox, iBasis, and Covista Communications. Bryce will begin his presentation immediately following this introductory video, so let's get started. Did you know that the single biggest complaint with the FTC and FCC is unwanted phone calls? We get unwanted calls daily. At night, in the morning, when you're eating, when you're working, when you're driving, even when you're with your kids. It really is the worst. But think back to a time, a time not that long ago. Remember when people actually wanted to answer calls? It was a rush to hear your phone ring, and you couldn't wait to hear whose voice was on the other end. But that once coveted sound of a phone ringing now brings disdain, annoyance, and headaches. And it's getting worse. With the advent of the mobile phone came a host of new problems. Not only did you start receiving those pesky annoying calls when they came to your mobile phone, you had to pay for them. Fast forward to present day and it's even worse. Why? Technology advancements have allowed for new ways for uninvited calls to barge into our lives. These advances allow companies to make their calls from anywhere in the world and look like a local call. This leads to ignoring phone calls because the likelihood these days is that the person on the other side of the call is not someone you want to speak with. A big change from the early days of telephony. But there is good news. There are technological solutions that will allow the receiver of a phone call to instantly verify if the caller is who they say they are or not. Interested in learning more? Call iConnective now. Thank you everyone for joining today. My name is Bryce McWhorter and I am Director of Product Management for Telecom Routing Administration and Mobile ID at iConnective. Also joining me today is Gary Richenacker from our Industry Relations and CTO Group. Our format for the discussion today is to cover a high-level review of the proposed industry solution to mitigate the issues related to scamming and spoofing and the potential impact to PACE members, brands, and contact centers. Immediately following this presentation, we will hold a Q&A session to address your, your questions and comments. Consumers, legitimate robocallers, and the FTC are all looking for relief from unwanted robocalls, scamming, and illegitimate spoofing. Through various industry groups, service providers, solution providers, and industry leaders such as iConnective are working to design the framework from which future solutions can be deployed to put control back in the hands of the subscriber and improve already deployed solutions 
such as call blocking and caller name. An added benefit of this framework will be a greatly increased ability to identify the source of unwanted or fraudulent calls. So let's talk about that framework. Industry participants have designed a framework that will integrate a public key infrastructure, or PKI, into packet-based telephony networks. Similar, but slightly adapted, this framework will behave much like the infrastructure that we all use daily to create digital signatures or send and receive encrypted data online. Once deployed, the terminating service provider will be able to validate critical information such as caller ID or originating network. Simply put, this framework doesn't just solve the problem of spoofing. It makes existing solutions more accurate and reliable by verifying these critical signaling parameters. In this high-level diagram, you can see the basic functionality at work. First, a call is originated to a service provider. Then the service provider uses its private key to sign the call. The call is then routed. Lastly, the termination provider receives the call and uses the origination provider's public key to validate the signaling parameters and verify the call. So what does all this mean? Well, let's start with what it means for service providers. Once the framework is deployed, service providers will be able to identify illegitimately spoof calls, identify the service provider or gateway originating the unwanted or spoof call, indicate whether or not the call was verified or not to the consumer through an app or display, apply treatments such as recordings or messages to unwanted calls, rely less on algorithms, analytics, and blacklists, improve service levels for legitimate robocallers by reducing improper treatments and false positives, and finally, force accountability for other service providers. Now that we've covered the basic benefits for service providers, let's get into more detail about what consumers could potentially see. Today, when you receive a call on your mobile phone, if the number displayed matches the number you have stored in your contacts, you can mostly trust that you know the originator of the call, as it's unlikely that you receive a large number of spoof calls from numbers in your stored contacts. However, if the number calling isn't in your contacts, what do you do? For many callers, this is the end of the line. An unknown number is just as bad as no number or a known bad number. There's no way to differentiate your call from the bad actors. The stir-shaken framework will clearly and accurately display to the consumer if the caller ID is legitimate, empowering the consumer to choose whether or not they want to answer the call. But corporations are people too. Absolutely. There's an entire vertical in the fraud identification space dedicated to helping mitigate risks associated with calls into contact centers. The stir-shaken framework can be used by contact centers as a method to validate the source of an inbound call. But let's not forget the most important part. As I mentioned on the previous slide, this technology puts the knowledge and control back into the hands of the consumer. So if your brand or campaign gets to the consumer with anything less than fully verified, you haven't differentiated your call from the bad actors. We fully expect brands and contact centers to be the early adopters of this technology. Let's go back to a previous point I just made. If your call gets to the consumer with anything less than fully verified. So this framework uses a classification methodology called attestation. And it's really, really important, especially for a contact center. The stir and shaken framework will implement an attestation level to indicate the relationship between the call originator and the originating service provider. This attestation is your key to differentiating your call from a potentially unwanted call. Given this is a new technology, it's possible or even likely that additional attestation classifications or changes to the existing classification could be defined. While we can't be certain how attestation will be used once this technology is fully deployed, what we are certain about is that contact centers are the power users of the industry, potentially using the same technology and methods deployed by service providers to least cost route or originate calls. Due to this fact, it's safe to assume that contact centers may not fit into an easily defined use case. For instance, in this example from PACE, the originating service provider could receive a call from a legitimate contact center 
using a legitimately obtained telephone. However, the service provider may not be able to attest to the ownership of that TN. What does this mean for PACE members? You will be able to differentiate your legitimate, compliant brand or campaign from scammers and non-compliant originators. Early adoption could mitigate issues related to call blocking, algorithms, and blacklists. The integrity and reputation of the service provider you choose may be important. Can all service providers participate? Well, that depends on your definition of a service provider. Currently, the specification defines a service provider as an OCN holder, an OCN referring to the four-digit alphanumeric code assigned to service providers when, with regulated interconnection agreements and assigned number codes or blocks. Over-the-top providers, aggregators, and wholesalers will need to be enabled by the OCN holder to sign a call at origination, which is currently not defined in the specification. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, the service provider you choose, its integrity, reputation, and how it operates and interconnects with other service providers matters. Verification should be possible by any party receiving a call via a protocol that supports stir and shaken. So technically, a non-OCM service provider or enterprise could do verification for inbound calls if the hardware software vendor uh, supports the updated protocol spec. Lastly. For calls originating from aggregators by a foreign entity, the risk of a gateway or lowest level attestation is something you should pay close attention to. For instance, for a legitimate call center in Panama originating calls with US ANI or caller ID, if a rich regional aggregator is used for calls destined to the United States, rather than originating calls directly to a US service provider that can authenticate those calls, these calls will have little differentiation from non-compliant or non-authenticated calls. Work is well underway at Addis and the IETF. The technical specification has been developed for shaken and certificate management. Work is ongoing to define the display framework and the policy administration and governance authority role. It's important that you think about this technology as the foundation for new technologies to be developed and a way to make existing technologies more reliable and more accurate. Suggestions and final thoughts. Speak with your service providers about their plans to implement this framework. Also speak with your hardware or software vendors. Participate in the IPNNI, the Network to Network Interface Standards activities to ensure this approach meets your needs. Work is still ongoing. Standards and processes are still being defined. So now that we've covered the presentation, we'll open the floor to questions. <laughs>